How you doing? Thank you for tuning in to this here video presentation by Mr. Larry Whittington, or as he want to be known, Mr. Witt. Mr. Whittington knows all about mathematics, and that is why he founded the Fort Bend Tutorings. Today we're going to learn about word problems. Not the kind where you curse people out, but the mathematical kinds. The kind I don't be understanding at all. Alright, get your ink pen and your pencil ready. Take notes, because you're finna learn from Mr. Witt. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, FBT, and today we'll be talking about solving percent problems, that's right. I'm going to give you guys a couple of strategies in order to solve these, that's right. One of the methods that I'll be talking about is algebraic translation. Mm -hmm. The other method is going to be solving by percent proportion. You got it. So for every problem that you see, I'm going to be doing it twice, okay, two times. One using the algebraic translation method and the second time I'll be doing it using the percent proportion so here we are ladies and gentlemen problem number one what is 30 percent of 24 what is 30 percent of 24 well if you want to translate this into an algebraic equation what you need to know is the following the word what is always your variable the word is is always the equal sign I need you to change your percent into decimal notation the word of means to multiply Mm hmm just like that so for our variable let's use let's use X yeah X will be our friend today so in translating this the word what is our variable X that we chose the word is is the equal sign we will convert our percent into a decimal by moving the decimal two places to the left to write this as three tenths the word of means to multiply I'll show that using parentheses this time and I have my number 24 there we go just like that so multiplying 3 tenths times 24 you end up with X equaling to 7 and 2 tenths that's it so that's our answer ladies and gentlemen that's it that's all you have to do so we translated this into an algebraic equation by changing the what into our variable we use the equal sign for the word is we change our percent into decimal notation by moving the decimal two places to the left. The word of means to multiply, and we multiply that by 24 because it was in the problem already, right? So 3 tenths times 24, that gives me 7 and 2 tenths. That's right. You can always plug your answer back into the original problem to see if it makes sense to you. For instance, it says, uh, what is 30% of 24? And so 30% of 24, it being 7 and 2 tenths, yeah, that sounds about right. How do I know? And I know that 10% of 24 is 2.4, and, you know, 3 times 2.4 is going to give me 7.2. There it is. Several ways to look at it. All makes sense to me. So that's our answer. Yep, that's using algebraic translation. Let's continue. All right. Problem number one again. Yes, that's right. Problem number one again, because I told you I was going to show you the percent proportion method. And that percent proportion that I use is is over of equals to the percent over 100. Is over of equals to the percent over 100. So let me show you how to plug this information in. First of all, let's start by identifying the percent. It's always easier if you start with the percent first, okay? We know that the percent is 30%, correct? And the percent goes right over this 100. So I'm going to start out by saying 30 over 100. Mm -hmm. From there, this percent is separating our expression, our question. So it's saying to the left is what? So therefore, our is value is a variable. We don't know what it is. So I'm going to use x again. Then this says of 24. So 24 must be our of value. So here we are with this. So I've rewritten this problem into x over 24 equals to 30 over 100. Okay, so because we have a fraction set equal to a fraction, you can always use the extremes means method. Another phrase for that that you've heard before, it means cross multiply. That's it, just cross multiply. But I'm going to choose to simplify this fraction over here first because, I mean, I don't like dealing with big numbers if I don't have to. So I can reduce both the 30 and the 100 by 10. Mm -hmm, I sure can. I can reduce the 30 by 10. I can reduce this 100 by 10. And I can rewrite this as x over 24 equals to 3 tenths, just like so. Then I'm going to cross multiply. Mm -hmm. And I have 10 times x, which is 10x, and 24 times 3 gives me 72. To solve for x, all we need to do next is divide both sides by 10, and 72 divided by 10, ladies and gentlemen, is 7 and 2 tenths. Mm -hmm. 
there you go so that's using percent proportion is over of equals to the percent over 100 so those are the two methods that we'll be talking about in this lesson today all right let's check out problem number two for problem number two we had 25 percent of what is 16 so once again the first strategy that we'll use is algebraic translation let's change this into an equation so remember we'll be converting this percent into a decimal so that'll be 25 hundredths times what is any variable that we choose so I'm going to choose y is is the equal sign and then I have the number 16 that's it from here I'm going to divide both sides by 25 hundredths like so all right, my 2500s will cancel out, and I'm bringing down my y, which equals to 16, divided by 2500s. Well, we're not going to be satisfied with this, ladies and gentlemen. No, we're not. We're going to go ahead and use a little long division here. Okay, let's find out what this equals to. I'll have 2500s going into 16. I'm going to move the decimal over two places to the right. Okay, add a zero here, add a zero there, bring my decimal up. And 25 won't go into 1. Nope, it won't go into 16. Mm -mm. But it'll go into 166 times without going over. So that's 150. 6 times 25 is 150. Then I'll subtract. That's a 1, 0, and a 0. And 25 goes into 100 four times. You got it. So 4 times 25 is 100. And that reduces to 0. It terminates. So my answer is 64. And that's it. So 64 is the result. Let's see if that makes sense when I plug it in. So 25% of what is 16? Well, 25% of 64 is 16. Well, that makes sense because 25% is like dividing by 4. And 64 divided by 4 is 16. So that works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 2, y equals to 64. There you go. All right. So let's continue on. Problem number 2 again this time with the percent proportion all right remember is over of equals to the percent over 100 so to plug this in remember I advised you to always start with your percent first it's the easiest thing to identify so I'll be plugging in 25 over 100 here then this says of what well I don't know what what is so that's my variable so I'll use the variable for my of in this case and it says is 16 so my 16 is my is value all right so that's how I plug that in and once again ladies and gentlemen as long as you're on one side of the equal sign you can simplify this now you can't simplify straight across when you're cross multiplying so never never do that but if you're only on one side of the equal sign uh-huh you can reduce that fraction so the 25 over 100 I'm reducing this I'm reducing this by 25 Yep. Why well, deal with big numbers if I don't have to? So I'm going to rewrite this as 16 over y equals to 1 fourth, just like that. And then I'm going to cross multiply because it's fun. And I get to draw arrows, and I like drawing arrows. 4 times 16 is 64. Y times 1 is y. Done. It's over. That's it. Got a box around it. Just like that. That's the process, ladies and gentlemen. That was percent proportion for problem number two. Moving on, next problem. Problem number three, we have what percent of 20 is 15? So what I'm going to do in this problem, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm going to use the algebraic translation in order to convert this into an equation. So what percent means I'm going to be using a variable for the percent. Of means to multiply times 20. So multiplying a variable times a number, you always put the number first. So this time I'm going to use n as my variable. So I'm going to put 20 in the equal sign will represent the word is and I'll bring down the number 15 yep from there I'll be dividing both sides by 20 okay so I have n equals to 15 twentieths but remember we're solving for a percent ladies and gentlemen and every percent is over 100 so you want to convert this 15 twentieths into percent notation you can do that by dividing and then moving the decimal two places to the right or you can do what I'm about to do and that is change this denominator to 100 and I can do that by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by 5 so watch what happens we'll have n equals to 15 times 5 which is 75 and 20 times 5 is 100 and any number over 100 ladies and gentlemen is a percent so this is 75 percent and done that's it got a box around my answer and it's red
So that's problem number three, using algebraic translation. Let's continue on. So with problem number three here, I'm going to show you the same problem, this time using percent proportion, okay? So here I'm gonna plug it into this equation of is over of equals to the percent over 100. Remember, start with your percent first because it's the easiest thing to identify. And you know what? They're starting out with the word what percent. Yeah, what percent, what? Yeah, so you don't know what it is. So I'm gonna use my variable n. I'll be saying n over 100 equals to of is 20. So I'll put 20 in the denominator here. Is is 15, so 15 goes in the numerator. And as I told you before, I prefer to simplify if I have the opportunity to. Remember, you can only simplify on one side of the equal sign, okay? So you can't go skipping across the lake here, all right? You can do it diagonally. No doing that when you're cross multiplying. So 15 and 20 can both be reduced by 5. So I'm going to rewrite this as 5 going into 15 3 times, 5 going into 24 times. So this is 3 fourths equals to n over 100. Yes. Then cross multiplying this, arrows popping, I have 100 times 3 is 300, and 4 times n is 4n. So I have 300 equals to 4n. So next, dividing both sides by 4, that coefficient in front of the variable, we end up with n equaling to 300 divided by 4. Yep, that's 75%. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the answer. Done and done. That's problem number three using the percent proportion method. Yeah, and ladies and gentlemen, this also concludes our video on solving percent problems. So we showed you how to solve the problem using algebraic translation into an equation or using the percent proportion with a cross multiplication. All right, so this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. As always, please go ahead and subscribe, rate, comment, like our Facebook page, and follow us on Twitter. Peace. We're going to be learning about such things as linear, quadratics, system of equations, tables, mixtures, work, oh Lord, distance, interest, of which I don't have much, investment. This is my favorite one. I'm going to name my grandbaby consecutive integers, <laughs> algebraic translations and percents. I understand a little bit about my sense. I know that 50% off is pretty good. <laughs>